For timing the transfer parts, I use this wooden block, a hollow at the center so I have some room for my tool um, instead of having it flat. Um, and seeing they're made out of wood, I have to make them for winter and for summer because uh, the wood swells and shrinks. And I have to make new ones every once in a while because I do, you know, touch this surface and grind it off. I put it back in the lathe, smoothen it up, and then to readjust my uh, timing, I put some tape on the bottom of it, and I can do this for a while. Eventually, I'll put a ring in the top of the cylinder, take up some space, um, and then eventually I'll make a new block. But I can probably do 25 or more saws on a block. So <coughs> I drop that in the cylinder. Um, cylinder back on a saw. Back up my my degree wheel. Hold down on my cylinder. Back my degree wheel up until it hits the block. And I'll go forward until it hits the block. There. Set my pointer to zero. That's pretty close. Run it up there, that's 90, 110, that's about 119. And uh, I'm going to set about 118 on this saw. So I'll be adding a little tape. So, in my experience here, um, one uh, piece of tape, thickness of a piece of tape on there, equals approximately one degree in duration. So we're going to add one layer. And that's just the thickness of a piece of tape. You know, a lot of guys will just put a, a mark, a sharpie mark in the cylinder and grind to a sharpie mark. That's like 40 thousandths, 30 thousandths, 20 thousandths wide, whatever it is. Depends on how wore out your sharpie is, I guess. I make sure I don't have any bumps from cutting that. And then we time it again. Zero, ninety, hundred, ten, eighteen. So one one degree difference there that I put in there. That's uh, just the thickness of a piece of tape. Um, you know, guys can decide how they want to do this, but this is the easiest for me, and I can reuse that block over and over and over. So. That's how I do it. We'll get on to grinding. So let's talk a second about um, scavenging. Uh, it, it's a, a loop scavenged engine. 
Uh, it's piston ported, meaning that the piston opens and closes the ports. So if we start at top dead center with the piston and it's coming down, it, it closes the, the uh, intake port, builds pressure in the crankcase until the transfer port opens, and pushes that pressure up past the, on this particular saw, up past the, the through the piston, uh, into the lower transfers and up through the transfer ports. And the transfer ports are angled and pointing towards the intake port um, away from the exhaust. Um, a lot of guys will angle the, the roof of the transfer port up um, thinking that that's where they want all the fuel to go is up. And the problem with that is that it's, it's um, trying to mix with everything and you end up with dead spaces. Now this is the wrong piston for this saw, but um, I, I, what I want is for the, the, the fuel to come in on an angle across the piston I don't want, if I angle it up, it'll leave a pocket right in the back corner of old uh, burnt fuel. There's nothing there. It's just old dead air, uh, nothing in it. And you're, you're angled up past it, and it goes up, and it, and it loops over. But it leaves that big pocket in the back. And I want it to come straight across the top of the piston, and, and, and have it collide in the back along the cylinder wall and the only place it can go from there is up and so it it empties this pocket as the as the fuel's going in exhaust is going out and you don't want to point them straight across because it'll just go out the exhaust your fresh charge will go right out the exhaust so I want it to come in and across and up and over through the, the combustion chamber and down out the exhaust. <clears throat> By doing this, we are we're literally building a wall of fresh charge that doesn't mix with the with the spent fuel or spent charge that's in there. So it doesn't mix. You don't want it to mix. You want a full clean charge to go in there. And that's what I do. You know, on most most pistons, I don't have anything to show you, but most pistons and a lot of saws are just completely black. There, there's no like wash pattern of this fresh charge coming in there, and that's because they're all angled up just a little bit. I cut my roofs flat. Um, so that it pushes it across and all my pistons show nice wash patterns on them and it gives you an idea of if one side is working harder than the other and you want it central you want it to work the same so it holds that charge in the middle of the of everything it goes out the exhaust if it's a little bit off one side or the other one side's lazy It'll push the pattern over towards the lazy side, and then your fuel charge doesn't uh, uh, evacuate the the spent charge out of the combustion chamber as well because it's off center, it's off to one side. So we work on on wash patterns and, and trying to get everything to to flow the way it's supposed to, and and uh, and do that. So that's what I'll be grinding into this is is a, as flat as I can tell with my tools. Uh, it's, it's a hand job. There's nothing perfect about what we do. Um, so the, the part of that port will be flat and then it'll round out to the back of the port. And on chainsaws, no matter what I do with it, I can't make it the way it really should be. This transfer port should be bulged way out here and brought in flat for a longer 
time period to get it to go the direction that it's supposed to go uh, get it towards the intake side, you know, aim it this way, bulge this way out, maybe bulge it back so it has to curl in and point towards the intake, and do everything that it's really claimed to do. But, you know, like on a dirt bike or a snowmobile or ATV, you've got all the room in the world to do that with an engine. With a chainsaw, you're trying to build a compact, small motor. So it's part of why chainsaws don't produce the kind of power that uh, motorcycles and dirt bikes and that kind of stuff produce. Um, much shorter stroke, oddities in the, in the uh, transfers and the way they're made. Uh, most bikes are reed, uh, case reed fed, so you have more room in here for transfer ports, all that kind of stuff. So, um, what we're going to be doing is, is grinding this the best we can. I'm um, really not going to widen the port out at all. I could widen it towards the exhaust a little bit, but it's hard to get a good angle in the back corner to do that. Um, and I don't want to bell mouth it all out. So, we're just going to raise it a little bit. We might you know just widen a, a little freckle on, on the intake side but that would be all that we do nothing too crazy um, got to keep in mind when you're porting saws is the position of these pins you don't ever want to get that pin in a port so you know those are just other little things to you to keep in mind we got a pin here and a pin over here and we don't want them to ever get within a port um, so that's part of why we're we're not really going to widen these out. I don't want to get too close to those pins. Um, so uh, we'll get the grinding on this. So I use a few different tools in, in grinding transfers. Um, you know, these are high dollar, very expensive. Um, I think this is close to five hundred dollars to replace this much of it. This end is is one piece. This adapter is another. Uh, you're, you're into two fifty or something for that. And I think these are over a hundred bucks. Um, and plus your bits and stuff. And there's a very fine worm gear in here or bevel gear in here, and uh, we do strip them out. This one's getting wore out. Uh, it's getting rough. You can feel it. It's it's not as smooth as it could be. And of course, I have two of them. This one's a little better shape. Um, uh, and and they just do wear out in time. Uh, sometimes they're worth repairing, rebuilding. Uh, but the parts to go in them are expensive as well. So sometimes it's just as cheap to replace the thing as it is to rebuild it. And then I use a few others. This is a round ball aluminum hog, uh, and that's what these are, are both aluminum hog but different shapes. Um, and I have two of these so I don't have to constantly change bits. Um, then, then this is a round ball aluminum hog. Uh, I've got round balls and double cuts as well. Um, but this is to help aid make in the corners. This is a double cut. I've showed this one before. Um, and of course my straight straight one with aluminum hog. Um, don't I don't do too much lower transfer work. Um, most of the time I don't see any real gains doing any lower work. Um, and especially on this saw, it really doesn't need any at all. So but we have to blend the the when I cut the roof now I have to blend that corner back into it so I need these to get in the tunnel to work from both directions and blend that in there make a nice smooth transaction want a rounded corner in there nothing too square kind of a round corner and um, into that flat so that it, it it sends it across the top of the piston that's what we're working on um, 
and which one of these that I use that really depends on um, the the cylinder itself or what I can get in there so some of the smaller cylinders I can't never even stick this size this quarter inch and I can never even get this in there and I have to use smaller bits um, so we're taking quite a bit out of this to go from 106 I think we were at to 118 let me turn my light on here Uh, we'll see if we can't get that where you can see it. Let's see. It kind of get an idea there of what we're going to take out. And uh, of course the other side. And so we'll get after that and get started here and, and uh, be able to see what I'm doing. Try to get you where we can see. And you won't be able to see much because even I can't see much once I get everything in in there. Firm grip and I squeeze the cylinder in my between my knees here. spin in there and you know I'll, I just want to touch it I don't want to get into that block very far One side's always easier than the other side. They do make left-hand cutters, but not an aluminum hog, only in a double cut. 
and you actually stick it out this side and you can actually uh, it'll run opposite direction you know it, it's turning the same direction but the cutter is the opposite and uh, some guys find it easier to cut the other side with with running a bit the opposite direction and uh, I've tried that and all that it's not it doesn't work for me so I don't bother with that gotta gotta use what works for you not what works for someone else bit that I'm using is relatively dull um, so it's not real aggressive I don't want a real aggressive bit in there um, it's too easy to make mistakes so I use these aluminum hogs on my straight tool until I start getting uh, about half of its life and then I put them in my uh, right angle heads So, uh, I kind of like that. And with the block, one side should be the same as the other side. I'm just touching the block, not, not trying to take any out. And you can hear the block actually spins in there. You know, when the tool touches it, it'll spin. So I don't 
you know, dig a big hole in the block and uh, pretty easy to stay even that way. So now we have to do, we have to get in and round out these corners in the back and get them to flow in. Pretty much done with the block. <clears throat> I had a mark on here. It's two purposes. Uh, sometimes it's so that I don't go back in if I'm doing one side and so that I mark it that I'm finished with that. Um, with that port and I'll mark it and say I'm done with it. And when I do this now is I, I want to know that if I've touch this area when I'm doing my back part of it. So I'm just marking the um, the very edge here you know right at the window and I, I just do that so that when I'm working in the corner and trying to make that corner sometimes I touch that area and I want to know if I did that's why I put that mark in there. A lot of guys have asked me that why I have marks in my cylinder and we're gonna change headpiece handpiece here we're gonna we're gonna go to this more of an oval shape on this Switch into the ball.
I like that. Chatter is kind of hard to deal with sometimes, um, but you get used to it after a while, what you can get away with as far as chatter, what you can't. Okay, I like that. Um, okay, that's too much zoom, eh? There. I've kind of got things rounded out and smoothed up enough that I think we're good. I could make it smoother if I wanted to. And you can see that mark, I touched it a couple of times, but it's just a very light touch. I didn't change 
anything in duration or anything. It's just, and that's why I mark it. If I can see the mark go away, I know that I'm too close. And so, you'll see just a tad on both sides where I touch the mark. And uh, that looks good to me, and, and uh, this cylinder is ready to be, uh, all the ports are ready to be chamfered, and, and uh, we'll move on with that.